Guild Wars 2 has so many ways to play each class and everyone has their own suggestions for what the best builds and how to play them. But rarely do you ever see how to obtain the gear for those builds. While it is easy for already established players in Guild Wars 2 to gear their alt characters, getting your first character geared in the game definitely has some challenges. So in this video I'll assign relative value to equipment slots so you can prioritize what to work towards first and suggest the most efficient processes to obtain them that don't require you to have a lot of experience or already good gear so you can get beyond that initial hurdle. When starting out, you may just stitch together stats that you want for your playstyle, but later on those stats will manifest in specific combinations. While leveling, gear isn't required, but can make things a lot easier. You can gear up while leveling by completing the heart quests around the maps while you explore and then speaking to the heart quest vendors and purchasing their gear with karma which is gained by just doing events. But if you aren't leveling up in zones that are near your level, the gear won't be scaled up to your level. Personal story instances and level up rewards will also give you decent gear but you can't really control what you get from those so take what you can get. The real gearing process happens when you reach level 80. There are essentially three tiers of gear to consider. Exotic gear has orange text, which is very good stats and usually cheap and easy to get, but the gear becomes character bound, meaning you can't reuse it on other characters on the same account. And of course, you can't trade it to other players. Ascended gear is pink text, it's the best in slot for stat amounts, meaning once you get ascended, you can't get anything more powerful. Ascended gear is also account bound, meaning you can swap it between your other characters, just not between other players. Ascended weapons and armor can also be stat swapped in the Mystic Forge. Then there's legendary gear. These have the same stats as ascended, so you aren't any more powerful than ascended, but legendary gear can be swapped to any stat type at any time with no cost. The wardrobe skin can be changed without using up transmutation charges and you unlock the item in your legendary armory which means all of your characters can use that item simultaneously without having to swap whose inventory it's in. Legendaries also have many visual effects but they only provide convenience benefits, so it is advised to wait before going for them. So really, the question is should you get Exotic or Ascended at first? The difference in stats between Ascended and Exotic gear isn't that much. Maybe a 10% difference depending on which piece of gear, so you should consider Exotic gear when it's much easier to get than Ascended, but sometimes Ascended is also as easy to get and will skip right over Exotics. So we'll go over each slot and how to easily get the most efficient gear for them until you're fully decked out. Let's start with armor. It's quite a bit harder to get ascended for and usually you want to put runes in your armor too which makes investing in them rather inconvenient. I would rather start out with the exotic named armor sets which are dropped frequently and are tradable meaning they're quite cheap on the trading post. Don't buy armor labeled by its stats because it's the same thing but more expensive. The named armors have a limited selection of stats, but if you start out with these, you can get the exact stats you want later when we go for ascended. Alternatively, you can do ranked PvP or world vs world so long as you're participating. You'll eventually get warlord armor boxes, which allow you to select exotic armor pieces and a wider variety of stats to choose from if you double click on them. Doing events in the first map of the Heart of Thorns expansion, Verdant Brink, can also give you these stat selectable bladed armor boxes. While trinkets make up the majority of your stats, exotic trinkets are not usually worth their cost, so I suggest going straight for ascended trinkets, of which there are four types. The amulet has the most stats and is actually one of the easiest to go for. If you log into the game daily, you will get a daily login reward. Do this for an entire month and you will get a bunch of laurels, which is a currency only usable at laurel vendors. You can choose from a decent amount of stat types for amulets here. 
while you can get other ascended trinkets here, the amulet is the most cost efficient and the laurels are time gated so it's probably best to work on the other trinkets in other ways while letting your amulet build itself over time. Next in value are the rings. Ascended rings can be earned by spending pristine fractal relics in the Fractals of the Mists lobby, which has an entrance in Lion's Arch. You can earn these pristine relics by completing fractal dailies. You will struggle to solo these, but you don't necessarily require a full group to complete it either. You can search for a group for these in the LFG. You should stick to tier 1 and tier 2 fractals at first because you need agony resistance to survive which requires you to have ascended gear already. So its progression is closely tied to your ascended gearing progress. Do these low tier fractals every day for a few weeks and you should have enough for two rings. Be careful because these rings are unique, meaning you can only wear one of these. Get different ones with the same stats. If you do enjoy fractals, Getting Agony Resistance and doing later tiers is one of the best ways to get Ascended gear for your next characters, but let's continue. Accessories and backpacks can be gained from many of the Living World episodes, but the most efficient is the Living World Season 3, Episode 3, A Crack in the Ice. You need the Heart of Thorns expansion to gain access to this, and then you need to buy the specific episode, which can be done by converting gold to gems. If you care about spoilers, you can mute or skip the dialogue until you get to the map, Bitterfrost Frontier. Once at this map, you can buy the accessories and backpack from the Quaggan vendor at the top of the Sorrows Eclipse waypoint. The currency that the vendor asks for is Winter Berries and Unbound Magic. You can farm these berries using gathering tools in the forest to the west. If you follow this path, you can get a good amount of berries and they will respawn in about 24 hours. Do events around the map or consume the winter berries to earn the volatile magic. The more characters you can get to this map, the more berries you can farm. Alternatively, you can go to the Living World Season 3 Episode 2 Rising Flames and once you get to the map Ember Bay, you can exchange the petrified wood for an accessory and a backpack. For weapons, I suggest getting Ascended early on because it represents a huge portion of your build. As your first character, you won't have many options to get weapons, so unless you get a lucky weapon drop, many players will end up crafting their first set of Ascended weapons. If you want a detailed process of crafting an Ascended weapon, check out the Ascended Gearing Guide linked below. Otherwise, I would check out the specialization collections. These require expansions to complete, but can often be done parallel to the progression of your character. However, you may not like that specific weapon type. If that's the case, then just move on to the next part where we'll talk about how you can get any type of weapons or armor with selectable stats. So now that you have all ascended trinkets, but are missing ascended armor and some weapons, you can perform well enough. Try out raids, PvP, world vs world, strike missions, tier 3 fractals, and you can keep leveling your crafting professions. Once you get enough currency from any of these game modes, you can convert them into ascended, or if you get a lucky ascended drop, you can stat change them. To get the most popular insignias and inscriptions for the Mystic Forge recipe, you'll need to buy them on the trading post or buy the recipes to craft them in expansion content. All you need to do is bring any ascended weapon or armor to the forge, bring an exotic insignia if it's a piece of armor, or an exotic inscription if it's a weapon of the stats you want to swap to, then get 5 globs of ectoplasm, which can be bought on the trading post, and an anthology of heroes which cost spirit shards gained through experience after reaching level 80, and can be purchased from the merchant next to the mystic forge. So if you get an ascended helmet and you need that piece, but it gave you stats you don't want, you can swap them with the Mystic Forge recipe. Berserker insignias and inscriptions can be bought on the trading post, or you can buy the recipes for Berserker and Marauder insignias and inscriptions at the Master Crafters in Lion's Arch. Harrier inscriptions can be bought under the name of Morden inscription for weapons, or insignia of the Harrier for armor. 
Minstrel insignias and inscription recipes can be bought at Jaka Itzel in the Verdant Brink map in the Heart of Thorns expansion. You'll need the Itzel language mastery and then you can buy and craft them. Viper's insignia and inscription recipes can be bought from the vendor in Tarir in the Auric Basin Heart of Thorns map with the Exalted Acceptance Mastery. If you've bought an expansion, you'll have a level 80 boost which will also give that character a full set of exotic celestial gear when consumed. While not the best for every playstyle, there are many hybrid playstyles that can benefit from celestial. If you feel like the process of gearing up is too much to repeat, try out my playlist offering one playstyle for each specialization that requires only one set of gear to be viable in all game modes. Once you've got your character fully geared, enjoy the game and continue working on your personal goals like crafting legendaries, completing achievements, downing the hardest bosses, or contributing to your server in World vs. World. You'll be able to gear up your next character or your next playstyle much more easily once you've gotten to this point. So if you have any questions, leave a comment below. If this was helpful to you, like the video. If you'd like to see more content from me, subscribe. And if you want to support me, check the links in the description. Thank you to my patrons who help keep my content viable. And I will see you all next time.